Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, it is now going on 6 o'clock in the afternoon on a Wednesday, the busiest day of the week, and this has really been an extremely busy day, and I'm getting ready to go lay down because I am exhausted. <sighs> now, with that being said, got to talk to y'all for a second, okay? SACOM, the Securities Acquisition Trust Commission. SITCOM, the Securities Investment Trust Commission, created 2012 was when the names were created. Going into business later, maybe five, six years later, because this has been a plan. Ladies and gentlemen, SACOM and SITCOM deals in securities under the March 9, 1933 Act, not under the Securities Exchange Act. And they've been dealing in private securities from their inception. We told everybody that the securities would be allowed to mature, not because they needed to mature, but because that was the process we created. Why? We will just explain to you that there are no regulations for such securities under the March 9, 1933 Act, and so we created our own regulations. And we made sure that they will stand the test of time. People ask, are you gonna be doing any more sap packs? No, because these securities were being created and they're not gonna be created ever again. There will never ever be another sap pack. No sap pack this, no sap pack that. Just the, just the way it is. See, now you have a collector's item. Never again will they be created again. However, ladies and gentlemen, we told you about bonds but you didn't know about bonds you don't know how to create a bond you don't know what language is necessary for a bond so under the march 9 1933 act you are permitted to create bonds yay let's go to the march 9 1933 act do you guys mind this is the bond that was created we're going to talk about that in a second but now we're going to go here and we're going to do a word search find Find, find, find. B O N D. Now, this is the actual act. Notes, bonds, debentures. The amount of the notes, bonds, debentures. Okay? So the act did take into consideration. Pay attention. See the highlights? This is the very first page, ladies and gentlemen. It did take into consideration bonds. Now, let's find out. Let's read it in contact. The Reconstruction Finance Corporation may, with the approval of the Secretary of Treasury and under the rules and regulations as he may prescribe, sell in the open market or otherwise the whole or any part thereof any preferred stock of any national banking association, state bank, trust bank association, and by the corporation pursuant to this section. The amount of notes, bonds, debentures, or other such obligations which the Reconstruct Financial Company is authorized and empowered to issue. Yes, the Reconstruction Company was allowed to issue bonds, but here's the point. So were corporations. Ta-da! Now let's go to the next one. Look at that. 2% bonds of the United States. It says... By the deposit of bonds of the United States bearing circulation privilege. So look at that. The United States is able to create bonds. Well, interesting. So it did. Well, it says, I understand that banks owing the United States bonds can send them to the Federal Reserve Bank and have 90% of cash return. Ah, and then he says, Mr. Stiegel, an individual or any state bank, an individual, an individ an individual or any state bank may do it and the amount of the face of the bonds. Really? Okay, hold on. Oh, you guys didn't know that bonds are commercial business? <laughs> so the United States doesn't issue bonds in its corporate capacity, I mean, government capacity, it does so in a corporate capacity. There's no such thing as a government bond. The government cannot engage in commercial business. Sorry, I apologize. Some of you guys are gonna finally get this, okay? Some of you are finally gonna get and understand this. If the United States is creating bonds and allowed to create bonds, equal protection of law says you get to create bonds too. Why? Because the government cannot engage in commercial business for profit in the United States. 
They cannot do it. And maintain sovereignty? Impossible. Impossible. Because if the United States is issuing bonds, then that money must go back to the people. The profit of those bonds must go to the people. So when the United States issue bonds, who gets it? The Treasury Department. But where does it go? How come the people don't get it? How come the, all the monies the people get come from taxpayers? Pay attention. Every cent the people get, it comes from a taxpayer. It comes from the people. So how come the people don't get any bit of that bond? So we're not worried about that right now, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, the sad packs are bonds. But they're not actual bonds. They are only that to back up and support the bond. So you have to create the bond from the sad pack. How do you do that? Well, we're going to be providing a service doing that for people. It will cost you to have that service. You have the tax credits. Your tax credits you will use to back your bond. Exactly what's been said to you, but many don't know what you're doing. So I am training the staff right now to understand how the act applies and what is required under the act and under the laws 1933 prior to the Securities Exchange Act because we're only going to operate under the March 9, 1933 Act. Now, what does that mean? Hold on. Let me show you. Let me show you. Oh, right here, right here. This right here. <sighs> Pay attention. Here's a case which documents the Securities Exchange Act did not repeal the National Emergency Banking Relief Act. Of March of 1933, United States versus Commodity Exchange Incorporated, 1964. This shows that this act was still existing in 1964. We're not going to stop here. Well, we are going to stop here. I'm not going to show you all the other cases. In this case, the Supreme Court held that the Security Exchange Act did not repeal the National Emergency Bank and Relief Act of March of 1933. The court reasoned that the two acts were enacted with different purposes and the Securities Exchange Act did not expressly repeal the National Emergencies Act. Yay! What does that mean? Securities Exchange Act is inapplicable when a person is operating under the National Emergencies Banking Relief Act. Why? Because the National Emergency Banking Relief Act allows for bonds, notes, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances, trade acceptances. So, we created bonds under the National Emergency Banking Relief Act. Why do you think I've been doing nothing but videos on the National Emergency Banking Relief Act? Go back and listen when I told you that I was going to study that law because I knew that that was the law for which to operate. They hadn't changed it. There's a reason they haven't changed it. Remember, that was a 1968 case where they talked about not changing it. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to create bonds for people. And, well, technically, the bond is already created. We're just going to do the certificate for the bond for you. Now you'll use that bond and the collateral backing the bond to take care of things you need to take care of. You pay attention. We will not do that research for you. You're going to have to do that research. Why? 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 Because if we were to provide you the information on what to do with that, then that means that you would be getting a service like that for a couple of hundred dollars. And you'd be making a couple of million dollars, a couple of several hundred thousand dollars, 90,000, 80,000, 50,000 for paying a couple of hundred dollars, that's not reasonable. You see, my job has always been to provide a service to people, not to do the work for you. Okay, like I said, I have to train the staff because they have to be able to see the law says they can do, and that's what we talked about tonight. I showed them at least 40 cases where, yes, it can be done, and corporations can do it, and how it can be done, and blah, blah, blah. Other people have tried this, but they did not know many things. They were just writing bonds because they saw somebody else wrote a bond. God, that's why they got in so much trouble. Oh, and ladies and gentlemen, we will give you a sample template OID for you to perfect and file but you'll be responsible for the filing of the OID on your own. But remember, on a bond, you're the original issuer. And because that bond is backed by collateral and it represents a debt instrument, by all means, is the OID appropriate. 
when you understand why and how an OID may be utilized. So we will give you more on this as time goes on. All right, getting to those of you with arbitrations. Many people have had arbitrations. Many people who had arbitrations had a little bit of faith in the arbitration process because the courts are supposed to strongly favor arbitration. However, when you did an arbitration and you did it against one of their sister corporations, one of their so-called like corporations, they got upset, they got angry, they started dismissing your stuff, making threats to you, charging you. So ladies and gentlemen, I want you to see something right here. Orange County Sheriff's Department, that's their EIN number. Department of Homeland Security, this is their EIN number. Bureau of Investigations, this is their EIN number. Judicial Council of California, EIN number. State of California Government, EIN number. The Office of the Administrative Office of the Courts, EIN number. All of these corporations have EIN numbers. EIN numbers, well, that stands for Employer Identification Number. No, that stands for Taxpayer Identification Number. Now watch this. Hold on. We got to confirm this, don't we? All right. Give me a second. Let me scroll all the way down. Wake up. Wake up. Is an EIN number a taxpayer identification number? Question mark. Stop listening. Tick tock, tick tock. Yes. Uh-oh. An EIN number Employee identification number is a taxpayer identification number that is assigned by the Internal Revenue Service to identify a business entity for tax purposes. And EIN numbers are unique, blah, 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 blah. Ladies and gentlemen, watch this because I'm doing this for a young person who's incarcerated right now. And the fact is he didn't listen to me, which is why he's incarcerated because he didn't listen. But watch this. No, we're going to do this at the bottom. Hold, hold on. Not going to put it up at the top. Uh, yeah, let's do this right here. We're going to put it right here, and we're going to put it same font, same spelling, and we're going to space backwards. Okay. And we're going to take this, put that beneath, and then we're going to save. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a taxpayer identification number. <laughs> the sovereign pays no tax. So why does the sovereign supposedly have an EIN number? I'll tell you why. The reason why the sovereign has an EIN number because he ain't sovereign. Say what? He ain't the sovereign. It's a corporation. Okay. We already look. What you all need to know is you need to know what you know. If you don't know what you know, you don't need to know it, okay? Let me show you something. Let me show you let me let me let me show you something. Let me show you the way. I want to show you, not these, not those, not that. Where is my, nope, not there. I believe it's these right here. Here are eight cases whereby the petitioner challenged the court for placing their names in all capital letters, saying that the record must specify that the caption is referencing a natural person and not a corporation. And the court agreed. And as has changed the caption so that so as to distinguish the two separate entities. These are both marriages. This one, I believe, in Jones, at least I think it's Jones, where the guy went in the court. Look at that. Jones, brown, white, green, blue, red. <laughs> Yellow. Okay, now <laughs> I don't know why they labeled them that way. But in each of these cases, the person challenged them putting their names in all caps. And these are all California cases. Pay attention. All California cases where they challenged the name being in all caps. I'll, I'll be adding some more names, but this, is, this, this matter is a California matter. So that's why these cases are here. Ladies and gentlemen, each one of these cases, they challenged it saying that, oh, no, 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 no. All caps name is for a corporation. The court agreed. So everybody who has an arbitration for incarceration, they brought that issue up. Again, incarceration contracts are bond instruments because the arbitration award is a valid and binding award. You don't need a confirmation of the award to prove the award is valid as long as the award 
was issued and it was not timely challenged within 90 days if they waited beyond 90 days well technically 100 days after the award was issued then they got no claim now you take that award forgive them of the debt ta-da and create your bond and that's what the organization will do for you they will take care of the writing off of the debt for the full amount well no i'm sorry i got it i gotta say they'll write off the debt for the full amount but they will not do the bond for the full amount the bonds will be capped at a certain amount no cannot mess up this process you cannot overdo this process they're going to create one bond if you want to take and create your own bond after they create the one bond knock yourself out but their bond will be limited and here's the point their bond will be limited and it will be for the entire award if you want to separate and create it and uh, do the adjustment for the different parties that will be on you not on us but we're going to be limited in the amount that we do the bonds for that's for the incarceration contract that's for the child support contract that will be for the arbitration awards and that will be for all of the sat packs including the q packs please understand we know that you don't know how to do this and we know that you're gonna make missteps so I'm training the staff so that they can understand how to do this look everybody else didn't have all of the information they didn't have all of the numbers that are necessary for doing an OID we're gonna provide you with that information we're gonna provide you with solutions we're gonna provide you with the correct statements and information necessary needed for you if somebody takes this information and duplicates it that's on them but we're gonna provide you with the information okay as long as you stick with the program I don't mind people coming my way and asking me questions I don't mind the IRS coming and asking me why was it how was it I have the laws that I'm operating under I don't have a problem I know I know people went into court and they had laws too and they still blah 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 we're not doing this to mess with the economy at all what we're doing is what the law allows us to do and that's it just that simple all right ladies and gentlemen uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna let you guys get back to your day I just wanted to let you know about up and, and up and coming programs being offered by the organization all right gotta go gotta gotta go goodbye